Hello and welcome to the first video lecture in this series for ISDS 309 Introduction to Programming and the C Sharp Language. Uh, throughout this course, these video lectures will go over some concepts using both PowerPoint slides and um, you know, traditional uh, lecture um, tools, and I'll also be doing a lot of hands-on examples. So I would encourage you as you're watching these videos to follow along on your own computer. So if you can um, minimize the video to one part of your screen, or ideally if you have multiple devices, if you could watch the video on one screen and be working along typing out the code on another screen, that's really what's going to help you the most is really following along with the examples in this in these videos. Uh, we're gonna start more conceptually. This video in particular is mostly uh, terminology and getting you familiar with the language of, uh, you know, some of the words we use when we talk about programming languages. But it's gonna pick up the pace really quick and uh, within the next several videos, we're gonna be looking at a lot more code than then slides as we go along. Okay, so right now, most of you probably haven't done much programming, much coding, and so what's on the screen for you right now might just look like total nonsense garbage, something you have no idea what's going on. But by the time we're done with the first couple of modules, you will understand everything that's going on here in this picture. All right, so conceptually, starting at the very beginning, a computer program, which is also called software, is essentially a set of instructions that tells a computer what to do. So when you are writing programming code, you are writing instructions for the computers. Uh, software comes in two broad categories, system and application software. Uh, system software uh, is the software that actually makes the computer run. So for example, Microsoft Windows is a system software. Uh, the application software uh, is what actually allows users to do different things. So we're gonna be uh, starting small in this class and we're just gonna be programming some application software. All right, so the difference between software and hardware um, software is the instructions that we're coding. Hardware is the actual physical device, like the metals and plastics and everything else that makes up your physical computer. Um, in every computer, um, instructions are really come down to machine language. Machine language is binary language, ones and zeros. Uh, you know, ones represent switches that are on and zeros represent switches that are off within the hardware of a computer. Um, but now we're at a state of technology where we can type up our software instructions using English words. Um, you know, it's a C-sharp language, but we're using some English words um, which then get translated into this machine language, the ones and zeros that make the computer actually run. All right, so C Sharp is one of those languages that we call a high level programming language. As I said, we use keywords that are English words that you can understand, um, such as read, write, add. Um, and so when you're looking at a programming language such as C Sharp, it's easily decipherable uh, once you know how to navigate it, which is what we're gonna be learning to do in this class. Um, just like any other language, um, C Sharp and other programming languages have their own syntax, so they follow rules of the language. Um, the words that we use are English words that you already understand, but it's the syntax that's really different. Um, that's uh, really what you have to learn when you're taking a course like this one. 
So in English, the syntax consists, consists of uh, you know, capitalization, um, periods at the end of a sentence, using commas in lists, and so forth. And so we're going to be learning the syntax that you use in the C-sharp language in this course. All right, another key word to be familiar with is a compiler. A compiler is a piece of software that translates high-level language statements, such as those we use in C-sharp, into that machine language, the binary that the computer can actually understand. So we're going to learn how to write the language using the correct syntax and also how to use uh, a a compiler to translate that language into something the computer can actually do. All right, a brief history of programming uh, that I'll give you. Uh, programming started with uh, procedural based instructions. Um, procedural programs um, use computer memory locations that hold values, and we call these variables, and we refer to these variables by using uh, one word names called identifiers. So essentially a program is a series of steps or operations to manipulate those values. Okay. And then a bunch of those statements put together we call a method. And those can be used or called or invoked by other procedures or methods. Um, so essentially, you can think of it as programming languages have statements, so that's analogous to sentences in the English language. A method might be um, similar to a paragraph or a page or a book um, in a regular human language. So grouping together words and sentences into more meaningful things is uh, the, the basic idea behind a method. Okay, object-oriented programming is a specific type of programming. It's an extension of procedural programming um, that really uses um, the grouping and the language of, uh, of the programming code to represent something in the real world. So C Sharp is an example of an object-oriented programming language. Um, so what happens in an object-oriented language, and this will make more sense as we go along um, throughout the course, uh, but I'm just trying to set you up at a high level, introduce you to these keywords. As we see examples throughout the course, this will make more sense. Um, but in a C Sharp or other object-oriented programming languages, you group together your statements, your methods, um, your language in order to represent something in the real world, okay? So an object in the real world, an apple, let's say, it has attributes and behaviors, right? It has a color is an attribute, a size is an attribute, um, and then the behaviors are the things um, that it does. So I guess apple might not be a great example because an apple doesn't do a lot of things. Uh, it ripens. Um, yeah. <laughs> but any object you can think of has attributes and behaviors. And similarly, the things that we create using the C -sharp, Sharp language have attributes and behaviors. And again, we'll talk about this as we go along through the course, um, but this is just a brief history of um, you know, how these programming languages came about. They came about to represent um, objects in the real world. Okay, so the object-oriented approach then uh, means that we define objects that are needed to accomplish a certain task, and we develop classes that, that describe those objects.
Okay, a class in programming language is a category of objects or a type of object. Okay, it describes the attributes and behaviors of every object that is an instant or object of that class. Okay. Um, a file that contains the set of programming instructions uh, we often refer to as a class. Now an object is an instance of a class which contains its own set of attribute va values. Okay. So I used the example earlier uh, of an apple as an object. Okay. Apple as an abstract concept would be a class. An object would be a specific instance of that class. Okay. So the class Apple has attributes of color and size and a behavior of ripening. Okay. An object would be a specific apple that has the size four inches tall, um, color red, uh, ripens at uh, a rate of, you know, how, I don't know, it turns from green to red in a period of 30 days. I don't know. Um, but the idea is a specific object with specific values for an attribute um, is an instance of a class, whereas a class is just that abstract concept. Okay, so C Sharp in particular was developed as an object-oriented and component-oriented language. It's part of Microsoft Visual Studio. It allows every piece of data to be treated as an object and to consistently employ the principles of object-oriented programming. And it contains a GUI interface, a graphical user interface, that makes it similar to other languages such as Visual Basic. Okay, so I know all of this is really vague right now, um, but that's just to give you an idea of where the C-sharp programming language came from. By the time you go through this class, if you come back to these um, principles of the object-oriented approach to programming, um, you'll really see what it means in practice. Okay? Um, the idea of this video in particular isn't um, for you to completely understand the object-oriented approach and what that means, but it is to get you familiar with the, some of those keywords and phrases that we're going to be using throughout the course. All right, C Sharp was modeled after the C++ language. Um, it was created to be uh, easier to learn than other languages such as C++. Uh, the C Sharp language is very similar to Java. If any of you happen to have learned Java before, this class is going to be a breeze for you. Um, it's also somewhat similar to Visual Basic, okay? a little more concise than Visual Basic. Just to give you an example, I had learned Java um, and I had programmed things in Java over several years. And then when I was asked to start teaching this course for Cal State uh, um, just over two years ago, uh, I just picked up the language within a couple of weeks before starting to teach the language for this 309 course. Okay, so that's one of the beauties of learning one programming language is once you learn the concepts of programming, it's very easy to pick up other programming languages. Okay. It's just this first one that's going to have a high learning curve if you've never programmed before. If you have programmed, even in languages besides Java and Visual Basic, uh, this course is going to be a lot easier for you than if you've never done any programming at all. Now, the C Sharp programming language, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, is part of Microsoft's Visual Studio platform. And at this point in time, you should have already downloaded and installed Visual Studio onto your computer. Now, we're going to be using a few different 
actual pieces of software in order to program during this course. Okay, uh, one of them uh, being the Visual Studio environment itself, but we're actually not gonna be opening up and using the Visual Studio full application during our first couple of modules. Um, let me just show you. Okay, um, in Windows, if you click on the Start menu and you start typing Visual Studio, here's where you can find the Visual Studio app that you installed for this course. Now, as I mentioned, we're not gonna be using that for uh, a few modules. What we are gonna be using is if you Again, open your start menu and type in developer command prompt. We're gonna be using this application um, during the first two modules. It's a text-based application. And I want you to be familiar with uh, using the text-based application before we um, get into Visual Studio itself. Uh, another piece of software that we're going to be using is text editing software such as Notepad. Um, so that comes on Windows if you open the Start menu, type in Notepad. We're actually going to be using Notepad to um, program our very first piece of software in one of the next videos that you'll watch. Um, there are other text editing softwares out there that are really great um, for doing simple programming. One of them is called Notepad++. Let's type it out here. So, uh, if you do uh, just a Google or internet search for Notepad++, it's a free download. And the nice thing about Notepad++ is it works pretty much the same as Notepad, except it formats, it helps you format your, um, your words, your programming language and so forth using different colors, indentation and formatting. It recognizes different um, programming languages. And I have, I'll show you an example of that in, in one of my videos here for chapter one. But it's a, it's a great tool to look into. So those are the main tools that we'll be using. The text editing software, such as Notepad, or if you want to install Notepad++, the uh, developer command prompt for Visual Studio, and then, of course, Visual Studio, the application itself, which we will get into starting in Chapter 3. So we've laid the foundation, talked about some of the keywords, background, and history of C Sharp. So in the next video, we're going to get more practical and start from the beginning, do our very first program, and jump right in.